Hello there and welcome to video number four of this small series of um, vlogs on building this diorama. Um, thanks for all the likes and comments that, that you've left over the last few weeks, much appreciated. Okay, so this is where I am right now. As you might be able to see, I've added the first figure. I want to start getting some things moving now and get some stuff onto the build. Um, so this is the first one. Um, he's just sitting there. Um, he's going to have a bottle of wine with him soon. Um, the first few kits that I've got, next few kits rather that I've got, I've got Mini Arts Cart. Um, it was a little bit smaller than what I thought it might be, which is even better because I don't want any horses or anything included in this one. Um, it's just to be pulled by hand. So the cart, although I don't know exactly where it's going to go, we go roughly positioned about there. And I've got MK35's um, man leaning back, um, and here the idea is that he's pulled it along. It's going to be filled with possessions and baggage. And luggage um, there'll be something like that so that's a nice little kit that's just been put together and, uh, and given a primer of black and then I'll start working on that soon I've also um, got the Linden's Chow Time German tankers um, they've been put to be put together pretty much as they came out of the box um, and again just been given a prime with a grey car spray paint um, this one I've, I've actually put um, uh, a hornet's head on, a laughing one, um, and a cap, um, and uh, and they'll be positioned somewhere around that area. Um, so they'll go and fit in pretty well. Um, and also Stalingrad's old lady, um, just painted her bag so far again, although I've given her a spray of grey primer. Um, a nice little, nice little figure to put together, um, and actually complement the dio pretty nicely. So firstly a quick brief tour of the building and the model, um, I've added a year date at the top of the building um, just to add a bit of interest and some detail and then coming around down the bottom there's the first figure that we've added I've also put some posters and some uh, notices onto the, the walls of the dyer um, again to add some detail um, I've used some of Mini Nature's um, ivy, dead ivy onto the walls um, as you can see here that's how it comes. Uh, there's two different types that I've used there. Um, one is dead ivy, um, but I wasn't. Although it is set in the winter, I wasn't very happy with the colour. So I've added a few more leaves of uh, some dried mint leaves, and then I've uh, given it a dry brushing of various different green colours just to uh, give it a bit more depth of colour. On the grass on the side of the building, you might be able to make out some of this uh, moss that I've picked up from outside the house. Um, basically all that is, um, is is this stuff. This is similar although not exactly the same um, and all I just do is individually pick off all these little uh, threads, these little bulbs and then just plant them in the ground and they look like little flowers. It looks quite nice. The area that I'm working on now is, um, is the park area where the fence is going to go. Um, I've just started working on the fence now um, and the idea is this part is going to go like that and this part will be here like so. I've started painting it blue um, but I, next I'm going to be, I've used the hairspray effect, it's got this cream colour, the, the original colour is this one. Um, I've sprayed it with some hairspray then painting it in a couple of coats, light coats of the blue and then I'll start chipping it to give it a worn effect, make it look like the, uh, the fence has been there for some time um, and then finish it off with some uh, oil washers and some pastels. Finally the hole in the middle, as you can see there, that's for where the tree's going to go. Um, and for that I've just purchased some of this, um, some Gardener's Mate um, wire. Um, there's various different um, videos on YouTube, for example, you can uh, you can find to, uh, to, to build a tree from wire. This is the first time I've ever done anything like that, so it should be pretty interesting. Um, and I want it to look like a dead tree, so there'll be no leaves, it'll just be the branches. Um, so we'll see how that one goes as well. Okay, so I'm going to make a couple of transfers now. Um, one was an advertisement and one is a medical sign. Uh, for those, I've just got a couple of pieces. This is a piece of uh, balsa wood. I've painted up ready for it. This is a piece of plastic that I've uh, carved out with a tool and, some, uh, and a scalpel to get the wood grain. And that's going to be used for the advertisement. Um, for these transfers, there's two different types of paper you can get. This one is uh, a white sheet, depending on what sort of transfer you want. So I've done 
one of each just to show the difference between the two once they're, they're cut out. Um, and this one is a clearer one. Again, it'll be a bit more explained once, uh, once the transfers are made. Um, so first thing I have to do is to cut these pieces out. They're just printed onto A4 sheets of paper, um, just with a normal inkjet printer, uh, normal ink. Um, just the difference is these are special paper you can get from eBay, Amazon, places quite easily. Okay, so now they're cut out. Um, not, I don't usually cut them out individually, I just cut out a strip because now they have to be made waterproof and to do that um, I just use a clear super uh, sealer, gloss sealer and what that does, that just creates it, uh, um, a coating on it that makes it waterproof otherwise if you put it from here, if you put it straight into the water all the, one, all the colours would run because, uh, because they're not waterproof so this makes it waterproof and all I'll simply do is just give this a quick spray like that, leave it to dry uh, and then normally I give it another coating just to be safe, a second coating, leave it to dry uh, and then we can actually start to cut them off the, the actual pieces of paper proper. Okay so I've cut the transfers out now um, as close as I can to the size of the, the, the card that I want them to go on. Um, like I mentioned before one is clear and one is white depending on what sort of transfer you need it for. For example, the, these ones would have to be clear because you want to see the background uh, white. So all you need, you would want, is the the, uh, the red cross and the arrow and the uh, the writing for the field hospital. As opposed to this one, you wouldn't want a clear background. You want all. You would want all of this to cover all of that side, if that makes sense. So because there's one of each here, we can see uh, the difference between the two transfers. So now all I'm just going to do is drop them into just pure plain water, and uh, and and get them off the backing paper. So this is soaked now for just a couple of minutes and you can see it slides right off the paper and you can now see the difference between the two. This is the white paper um, which obviously is a solid block and the other one is the one that we do want for this transfer is the clear one and that just leaves the writing and the arrow as opposed to the to the whole thing. There you go. See? And then now we'll just transfer this straight onto our wooden board. Okay so I've cut the transfer out to size um, and attached it to the little uh, piece of wood. To attach it I use uh, Johnson's clear floor varnish um, just to give it a bit of uh, an adhesive and then once it's once it's on just give it another little coat and it helps um, to, to keep it in place. Um, there are other products obviously that you can buy, uh, Microset is the one we normally use for, uh, for transfers from the boxes but this transfer paper is slightly thicker and I find that the, uh, the Microset sometimes uh, crinkle it, um, the transfer and make it a little bit wrinkly whereas the Johnson's Clear is, is normally pretty good. And once that's on and it's dried uh, that's pretty much it. Um, if see, it might be slightly glossy, and that's um, sometimes from the from the paper or from the, the uh, gloss sealer that we've used. So to render that, I just use a little bit of matte varnish, a couple of coats of that, and that'll give it more of a buff finish and uh, and take that shine off. Okay, so I've put the other two designs in now, um, with the two, again with the two different uh, transfer papers. Now this is the clear one. And again, this is the one we don't want because it is totally clear. You can't really make out any detail, any writing. Um, that was the paper that we used the sign for. This is the one we do want, and this was on the white paper. And this one will come straight off, just as it looked like when it was on the paper. And that's the one we want. So, just place it onto the paper and just dry it off. And then I can attach it to the plastic.
so now the car is finished, just uh, just needs a little few pigments adding to it, but the weathering and everything has been done. So although I haven't got the contents of the car yet, I'm still waiting for those to be on order. Um, they're out of stock at the moment from Stalingrad, as is in one other figure. Um, I wanted to get this onto the onto the model to start building around it. Um, as there's a number of figures to add to the diorama um, after before I started adding them, I just want to get a figure placement. Um, so the scenario here will be the family of five have been stopped at the at the checkpoint. Um, the two guys, two ladies, and a small child. Um, this one of the soldiers looking over the scenario. What's going on over here? This is already um, look will take care of itself. Um, as in a few characters here and here is already organised, but it's just to get things started. Um, so this is the figure placements, probably where these where these people will go, um, and I can start working from there. Okay, so since I'm just starting to put the figures onto the model, I just thought I'd share a couple of reference books that I use that have been pretty invaluable to me in the past, um, or quite recently. Um, this one, Painting Guides for Figures World War Two. This is an um, invaluable book, um, really, really useful stuff that I've picked up starts off with the painting, uh, what paints to use and the equipment you might need then goes on to the, the face painting which is always a struggle um, to get try and uh, get some nice details, all the, the shading that you can have with the figure and the, and the faces um, loads of really nice photographs uh, later on goes on to uh, the different um, uniforms and the different paints suggests the paints that you use for them, uh, for the shading and the highlighting, and gives you little charts here that will explain uh, exactly what paints to use and the and the quantities uh, in which to use them in different color, different types of uniform, brown leather, onto the German camouflage again, really highly detailed uh, explanations, quite simple to to follow. Goes on to accessories, the different guns. Uh, and the equipment that you may use and again a breakdown of all the different paints that are required uh, I can't highly, I can't recommend this book highly enough uh, or figure sculpting how to improve your figures uh, and then even a little mini diorama there a little model there breakdown of how they how they put that together and then further on towards the back of the book uh, there's um, a gallery of, of figures that they've done and again, a breakdown of all the different colours and paints that they've used uh, for the shading and for the highlighting. Uh, all together, about 80 pages, really nicely uh, put together and uh, has improved my figures quite a lot, so I can recommend that one. Another set of book that I've recent, uh, books that I've recently uh, used uh, is a series of volumes, Landscapes of War, Greatest Guide Dioramas. There's, uh, at the moment, there's three books in this series, and this is, again, for dioramas, model building, is is great. Um, two trees, how to do trees of barks, uh, the barks of trees rather. Um, rocks, starting rocks from scratch uh, and all the painting skills that are involved there. Um, the first two volumes are based on vegetation um, and, and the natural uh, world. Um, a little bit on dusting and pigments. And they even, even, they even have a, a breakdown of real photographs so you can compare and uh, contrast what the real thing will and should actually look like. Uh, the first one is the slightly smaller of the th of the three books. Uh, again, there about ice and icicles. Again, uh, natural photos. Um, really, really nice books. This is the second volume. Uh, this one is is almost twice as thick, I think. Uh, but again, very similar. Going on to natural. Uh, natural resources and things that you can uh, use. They also explain the paints to use and they also use a lot of the I can try and find a picture a lot of the washes and, and the things that you can buy online that um, the vegetation that gives you an idea of, uh, of what to look for. Uh, the third one, this is quite a new one, is, uh, is rural environments and this is now a breakdown of what I've been using a little bit for this model that I've been working on is uh, scratch building houses, painting the houses, uh, how to get the best out of your models. Again, fantastic books, really, really well photographed. Um, once again, can't recommend them highly enough. Uh, how to use styrofoam, making brick walls, uh, all the different uh, products and things you can, uh, you can buy. Very well, rec very, really recommended. For anyone who wants to try and improve their models. Okay, so I'm coming to the end now of part four of these five videos on my diorama. 
Um, as you can see, the master box, check, master box checkpoint figures are now on. The two guards, uh, the officer and the three civilians. I've also added now um, the MK35 civilian and the Stalingrad civilian. And as I showed just earlier in the video, the two troops are down in the alleyway at the back now. Um, along with a refugee boy from Stalingrad who's part, um, part of a kit of two from there. One thing I did realise uh, just before was I hadn't made room for the poles for the, for the tram that are going to go on. So I had to shift up the car a little bit just to move it up so I got some space in the corner and in this corner here. Um, this is still loose. This was just to help me. But the pole will go there into the corner and then they'll be attached um, with wires to attach the two together. Um, just recently come down, I've got um, Mini Arts Champagne Cognac Bottles and Crates. Um, this comes a really nice set. This comes in uh, with six of each, six crates for the champagne, six for the cognac. Um, all done nicely and then all the bottles to go with it, um, along with the transfers. So, um, so I'll start putting those together. I've actually begun putting them together, as you can see. And those are going to be painted and dotted around towards the back here where this group of guys will be drinking. That's the next part I'll be working on. Um, a little civilian child will be also be there. Um, I'm just waiting now for uh, some kit from Stalingrad. One for the contents of the cart and another one for the corner here. Uh, so that should be on its way pretty soon and then I'll, everything will start to be coming together and to finish off. One thing I have still to do as well is to add the plaque at the front. Um, I got this idea from another model I saw on the internet um, compo comprising of photos from the time period that I've used uh, to get ideas for this model. Um, photos from the, of the civilians and refugees and also a little bit of text uh, that I've researched from some books um, to create the situation that these guys were in and how uh, how terrible it was for them. This is just printed onto cardboard at the moment. What I am hoping to do is to put it onto, see if I can get it printed onto a piece of card at a printer somewhere that may do it, um, to give it a bit more of a professional look and so it would stand out, um, look quite nice and then just in the middle there just the nameplate of the actual scene itself. Now I've just got to work a little bit more on the holes, fill it up with some water, put a bit more debris down there, put a, a little bit more of pigments down. Um, and I've also got some leaves saved from the winter which will be chopped up and deveined and they'll be sprinkled around again just to add a little more, more uh, detail to the scene and then we'll be pretty much there. Thanks very much for everyone for looking and watching so far, for liking and subscribing and I uh, hope to get part five, the last part up pretty soon.